British Army has a job like no other. There is a red life, state ceremonial public duties, and there is a green life, being prepared to fight the Queen's enemies on a battlefield. Duty bound to protect the Queen and royal family. The defence of the realm, that's essentially our number one job. Don't go for rapid! Elite infantry soldiers and masters of ceremonial precision. Stop pulling your feet in on that third pace and get back through it again. It's Britain, PLC. It's got to be world class all the time. The Coldstream Guards are internationally revered. When you go to Heathrow Airport, you can't buy a six-foot teddy bear of a paratrooper. You can buy a six-foot teddy bear of a guardsman. And responsible for delivering the biggest royal occasions. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, they're waiting at Windsor Castle. Now, that was watched by 1.9 billion people globally. In this series, we'll follow new recruits desperate to join the Coldstream Guards. All right, McHugh, am I boring you, am I? Why are you looking at the floor? Hey! Navigating the army's most unforgiving training. Down, down. So we're in contact. Quick, march! With exclusive access to national events. That is the queue then for Her Majesty. 48 seconds later, the rad arrows will fly past. From the Queen's birthday parade to a once in a generation state funeral. We hold a very significant responsibility in the eyes of the nation to get the message exactly correct. We reveal the reality of life on the blue line. First guard, Tower of London, it's amazing. Our motto is second to none. Second to none. Previously in Windsor, the Coldstream Guards received the go-ahead from the Queen's Commander of the Household Division Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Cowes, please. Yes, please. to return to public duties. Phew, it's done. Bit of a relief. The Major General seemed really happy. Little did they know their first state occasion would be the biggest ceremonial challenge the Guards have faced in over 50 years. It is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen announces the death of her beloved husband. As soon as we know, you will know. Everyone happy? Cool. Thank you very much. Major Cuccio soldiers have been called upon to perform at the Duke of Edinburgh's historic funeral. We've received the call with the news that we are going to take part in this important event. We're going to be providing the Corps of Drums, musical support to the occasion. The kind of public attention that is going to draw, the guys will be fully cognizant of the fact that all eyes of the world, in effect, will be upon them. We really want to make sure we get this right. At the Queen Elizabeth Barracks, Purbright, the foot guards have just five days to coordinate 700 of the finest servicemen and women from the Navy, RAF and Royal Marines, who will deliver Prince Philip's funeral parade. The whole event swung into action immediately. From notification of death, then uh, two hours later, the whole of this headquarters were upstairs in a briefing room discussing how we were going to execute funeral service. We knew we probably would get involved if something happened anyway. Um, Otbridge hasn't been a... It's not new. Uh, it shouldn't have surprised anyone. Drum Major Tony Oliver and his corps of drums will be asked to perform the parade of their lives. This is the first uh, state or royal funeral that I will have been involved in myself. Once in a lifetime, once in a sort of generation opportunity. The plan was kind of uh, finalised as to you know, how the parade was going to happen, as in all inside Windsor Castle, you know, with no um, involvement from the public under COVID guidelines. And for some of the new guys in the platoon, this is the first time they will actually be on parade in Tunic as part of the Corps of Drums. So that's a very big baptism of fire uh, for them. We've got everyone. No, we've not. Yes, fucking, there's loads of people missing. Yes, sir, there's a couple missing. 
Right, so lads, like I said, arrived first thing in the morning. With the Corps of Drums lacking recent ceremonial experience. So that one there, right, so we start here and on the side of the Rehearsals begin immediately. My flute players come up then. Ready? Now. Rolls, quick. Without wait, cancel. When you're coming up, don't drag your sticks across each other because you get that shh sound, all right? So go on for your rolls, quick. March! What's your initial thoughts on Friday when the call got given? It was like, oh shit. Well, yeah. Well, I think we were kind of expecting it sooner, mm. especially with the news when he'd gone into hospital and that. And then it all went quiet for a while. And I was sort of worried that we wouldn't be ready, I suppose. You know the cameras are on you. You know, the TV's all over you. You know, everybody needs to be doing exactly the same, whether it's coming up with the sticks, coming down with the flutes, you know, washing for the mace cut off, so on and so forth. You're up, you're down. Otherwise, that one mistake, which is... Which you only get remembered thing, for the mistake. You only well, get remembered for the mistake. Picture paints a thousand words. But that one person makes a mistake on the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral, and, you know, the eyes are drawn straight away by the civilian population that are watching us. We want to get into the guys' heads next door. Is Everything needs to be in sync. Drummer Luke Wall joined the platoon 18 months ago. With this one being my uh, first actual proper public duty that I've ever done within the Coalition Guards, because it came as like a little bit of a shock. It's uh, definitely going to be the most biggest one that I will most probably ever do. Obviously, you could have like millions on TV watching. In London, we're getting them ready for inspection in there. Number seven company must execute a planned ceremonial event. Right, stop fidgeting. Do you feel faint? You look faint. It's up to Vern Stokes to make sure they do. Tweeds are too high. Yeah. Just over the second lace hole breaking them. In 24 hours, Number 7 Company will be greeting the Iraqi Defence Secretary to Great Britain with a guard of honour. A state visit is the highest form of welcome that um, Her Majesty the Queen can offer uh, another head of state. My role would be to get everybody prepared for that, conduct the recce, conduct the rehearsals, and then be on hand at the moment to deliver the event as well. Over seven years, Stokes has masterminded 20 major state and royal parades using a piece of wood. This stick opens out to, to different lengths. And I know, for example, that the mall is 1,160 paces long. I know it's that because I've measured it with my stick. And I know that the band marches at 116 paces to the minute. If they march at a 30-inch pace at 116 paces to the minute, it's going to take exactly 10 minutes to get from South Africa Gate down to the approach road of Horse Girls Parade Ground. It enables me to deliver state occasions to the absolute second. Yeah, this is our time, number seven company. Shy. Stay switched on. The Guard of Honour will be 27-year-old Stephen Collins's first major ceremonial event. He's been a cold streamer for just six months. Being a cold streamer to me means a lot. I've dreamt of it since I was a kid. On a family holiday, I passed by Buckingham Palace and it just happened to be the cold stream guards that were on. I said that from then on, that one of these days I will be standing outside of Buckingham Palace. It's absolutely everything to me. Up in Catterick, the recruits in 25 platoon are more determined than ever to complete training and make it into their regiments. There's a lot of nervousness, lack of effort. The vast majority of you are having a reshow again. Those who previously failed their final drill test have one more chance to earn their place in Her Majesty's foot guards. Stand at ease and then start again. I'd be doing them a disservice if we were to go easy on them. Stand by, go! When they go to their incremental companies that are on ceremonial duties, 
they need to be able to be of the, the same standard as, as the other soldiers around them. 26-year-old Rob Cheeseborough and 18-year-old Joel Hodson need to pass this, or they can't graduate. I didn't think I'd achieve what I could have achieved since I've been here, regardless of what anyone else thinks. I myself think I've done well here. It will be up to company commander, Major Morell, as to whether they pass their individual drill. The same formation recruits will use when mounting guard at Buckingham Palace. He needs to calm down. He's got elbows for knees, knees for elbows, ankles for wrists. Cheeseborough is up. Stand by. Patrol. The biggest thing you're feeling when you're out on that square, definitely pride. There's always nerves. There needs to be. That guns and cheese, bro. Yes, sir, uh, yeah. <laughs> that is a standard I'm after. Hopefully the rest of that as well, sir. I think it was did all right. I think it passed. Formula One driver had to do a driving test at some point. You can't do the rest before we've done this. Cheeseborough has set the bar high. This young man here, he looks scared out of his skin. Have you told him he will be shot? Just a big rigid, I've got panic fuse, yes, I mean, I think he might have taken it a bit too far. Not even platoon sergeant Bradley escapes the major's eye for detail. And you learn to hold a stick properly, all right? It's there. Got so, yeah. yeah? Yep, Hodson's turn to re-show. As I understand, he was a late injury officer. He went through the list of the ranks. So he sort of understands, understands it, sort of how nervous we are, because he's had to do it. Fair one, OK. Yeah. Oh, I'm shaking. In Yorkshire, trainee guardsman Hodson is desperately trying to secure his place in the Coldstream Guards. Fair one, OK? Yeah. Oh, I'm shaking. Well, Hodson was here. He was fine. He needs to calm down. Aldridge, Hodson, pass. Like, come to attention, slow your arms, march off the square. Hodson achieves a pass. We're not recruits anymore, we're guys, because we passed literally everything. We've got to pass out next week Friday. Top of the world, mate. <laughs> oh, that's going to stink. With four days until the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral, ongoing rehearsals are relentless. All the troops that are going to be involved in the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral are all drawn up from those units with special relationships. An exact template of the procession has been marked out to rehearse on. It's a large uh, camp with enough ground to sort of represent the distance and the layout um, for the castle. And then all the tents uh, represent the different archways that you'll be going through. Both cause of drums will be in the background as His Royal Highness's coffin goes past. I've done several birthday parades, Guard of Honours, you know, state visits, etc. Uh, throughout my time. This will be probably the biggest thing that I'll do. I've been involved in the biggest parade in living memory. You don't have to motivate anybody because everybody wants to do the right thing for Her Majesty the Queen and for a dignified send-off for, for the Duke of Edinburgh. Guardsman Wall is one of many training hard. You've got all your kit to be clean, like you're looking smart, presentable. You've got to make sure your margin's up to standard, music's up to standard. You're being seen by everyone. So if I just pull these tweeds up at the minute, they should sit between the second lace holes on the drill boot. At number seven company, the guardsmen will need the same exacting standards to deliver a guard of honour. 
The boots is probably the most work yeah. for any guardsman. And possibly one of the easiest things to scratch and ruin straight away. But uh, every guardsman has a lot of pride in their yeah. boots as well. Before boots can be given a parade shine, is that sound? Yeah. They must go through a process known as being burnt down. The reason we burn it down is so the boot becomes rock solid. When marching and getting on the heel, we don't uh, crease the boot and it doesn't crack the polish. It keeps it nice and shiny. We melt some beeswax into a mess tin and we start applying it with a brush. Then with the heat gun, we put that close to the boot until these white bubbles start to form. That's the leather opening up on the boot, meaning it's taking the beeswax. From the burning down process to the final shine, you're looking on roughly three to four hours, possibly. Some call it picky, but to stand in front of Her Majesty the Queen, it is, it's what's needed. Now the polishing, or bulling, can begin. I'll start layering them up with a polish, and then once I've, I've put a few layers on, I will then start to bowl them, and then hopefully that nice parade shine will come through. We've got a history in the Coldstream Guards of being the best, and we just want to uphold that standard. Right, well, Sean Harris, open it up. Rapid fire! Being a cold streamer isn't just about ceremonial perfection. They are first and foremost infantry soldiers. Right, you're firing past his head. Hey, you're firing past his head, McDonald. Listen, you need to move round so you can find somewhere that you can shoot. All right. The new recruits will need to prove their combat readiness and complete four days of attack scenarios to stay on course. I expect the absolute highest standard from you. There's no around. We'll be covering pretty much everything you've learned from advanced contacts through to deliberate attacks to ambushes and culminating in a, in a platoon level deliberate attack. You need to show us what you've learned in order for us to pass you and for you to continue on your route to becoming a guardsman. But you need to work hard, no falling asleep on stag. Stag duty is a rotating night watch to keep the camp secure. But with virtually no sleep, it's taking its toll on Hudson. Someone's make sure up for stag. I'm thinking like I'm a clown right now. My mates are chilling in bed. I'm getting up at three in the morning absolutely freezing to watch a black area for no reason. Just try and imagine yourself being out here digging a hole to sleeping. What people say, like, one of the hardest, like, hardest courses in the world for infantry. What's stopping you from doing anything else? I used to just sit at home, play Xbox or something all the time. My mum cleaned my room for me, she made my bed, she made my food, she done everything for me. Now I'm doing it all for myself. So you've got that mindset, it sort of changes who you are. 19-year-old Kimani Lubin from St. Lucia is being tested as second in command for this exercise. An hour, 30 minutes. I'm trying an hour, 30 minutes. The twice is basically the number two of the sergeant. So anything the sergeant wants done in the section, he hands it over to the twice. -y. It's a bigger responsibility. You're supposed to make sure that everything is going right with everybody else. That was timid once. I was always looked at as I would never stand up. My courage grew in stronger and stronger every day. But if I don't have courage, I cannot be a good leader. He is tipped to win the top recruit award at the end of training. Personally, I believe Cheeseborough and top runners for best recruit. I do want top recruits. It'd be really good just to turn around, especially to my dad, and say, look, I've worked hard for the past six months, and this is what I've got to show for it. I hate to be one of these people that's just done nothing with their lives. Just sat in front of the TV every night and done nothing. In 
Purbright, just days before Prince Philip's funeral, final preparations are still being made. The Duke of Edinburgh famously joked about the fact that he's outlived all the people who wrote the plans for it, so uh, it's a testament to his sense of humour. He didn't want a full state funeral, so some of it is, is, is a first time. Um, so there's been a little bit of tweak and a little bit of improvisation. We realised that that plan was not fit for purpose, but we wanted to take every aspect of what was going to happen, and it was going to be a huge event, both in London and in Windsor, uh, and we compressed them. Not all are coping with the pace of rehearsals. It's never comfortable. Most of the lengthy process that we're having to go through is for the benefit of like the RAF and the Navy, the Marines and the non-guards units who aren't used to this kind of thing. That's why this guy's fainting on parade earlier today. We're drawing in lots of soldiers from units that aren't used to doing state ceremonial, so the longer they're on parade, the more chance you've got of, of people fainting. And the weather forecast looks like it's going to be extremely hot, so we have to make sure that people are prepared. You just stand there and stay switched on. Keep your mind occupied. Don't just stand there and switch off, because if you switch off, that's most likely when you're going to go down, because or if you sat there like, oh, I'm in pain, oh, it's hurting. The pressure's on when you've got them right there and you've got them all looking you up and down, like, left and right. With regimental pride on the line, all ranks need to deliver. The pressure on myself, obviously, along with the drum major, would be is ensuring that the guys know exactly what they've got to be doing when they've got to be doing it. Make sure the guys have got the correct kit and equipment. Yeah, lots, lots of kit checks. Lots of morning. kit checks. Trooper Nicola has got nothing on this, just because of the sheer size of everything. Um, with the amount of people here, the amount of bodies that are actually involved in the parade is, is kind of a big deal. My role on the day is choreographer, so to make sure that everybody's in the right place at the right time, the Duke of Edinburgh's coffin emerges at the right time, we step off exactly to the second, we then get to the West Steps of St George's Chapel at exactly the right time for the national one minute silence. I'm the chief timekeeper and, um, and I don't want to get that wrong. With the regiment working flat out, it's all sewing hands on deck. The tailor shop are very busy at the moment. We don't want a, a young lad in the tailor shop to have to have the pressure of, of doing this. Just to save them half an hour or whatever. So this is a drum major's cross belt. Um, and this is what signifies the drum major as a cold streamer. These are all battle honors where the regiments fought with distinction because these are, these are new ones. Because the other ones were a bit tired and had a few chips on them. I did try and touch them up with a, with a black lacquer, but it didn't quite match or look good enough. So we had some spare ones in the store, so I thought I might as well just put a brand new pair in. Uh, so then that way it's going to be as good as it can be. With millions watching this event, there can be no mistakes. A little bit nervous, but not, not as nervous as, like, what, you know, what, what the hell's going on? It's for honour and doing it properly. Um, that's the big thing for us, for me, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, he's right. We, we all know what we've got to do and, and how we're doing it. It's just, you're just nervous because of the, the event of what it is, you know, you want to make sure you do it right and do it to the best of your ability. Yeah. It's huge, absolutely huge. Mark out, 41 guardsmen stood out in the shape of a V and an A. In London, Seven Company must perform a faultless guard of honour, which will be Stephen Collins's first. When I saw these as a kid, this is what I wanted to do, so this is a big deal for me. We've done the rehearsals the last few years, and now it's time for the actual guard of honour event. My favourite bit of the uniform is the tunic, because it's famous all over the world, and it's an enormous sense of pride when you, when you do get to put it on. With the Iraqi Defence Secretary minutes away, final kit checks are made before they form up to represent the Queen. But disaster strikes. Well, he's picked up my basket, sir. Okay. Well, he's picked up my basket. Yeah. 
My heart absolutely dropped because I've never lost a single bit of kit and to lose a bear skin is quite a big thing. Somebody picked up the wrong bear skin off the bench, isn't it? <laughs> to be honest, all that was going through in my head is, God, I've got to find this bear skin quickly, because uh, literally at that moment, everybody was getting fell in for the parade. Find your spaces, get fell in! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With moments to spare, Collins gets a reprieve. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, are you sure? <laughs> See if it fits. Go ahead. Yeah, that's definitely good. Cool. <laughs> Bit of a panic there, but we're sorted now. What happened? Oh, somebody just picked up my basket by accident. It the new guardsman had a narrow escape. If it hadn't been gone, I wouldn't have been on the bread. I would have been pulled off, and one of the uh, lads that were in re reserve for it would have been put on. He falls in with the rest of Number 7 Company, ready to receive the Iraqi Defence Secretary. feel about six inches taller than you are. Wearing your full kit, you, you're a lot more confident and you've got your head held high, you've got your shoulders back and you, your chest is out. Despite the pressure, the guards lived up to their reputation and delivered an immaculate guard of honour. One of the proudest moments of my life that I've done up to now, to be representing the Coldstream Guards in front of a Major foreign dignity is an absolute problem. Deep in the Brecon beacons, the rookies have to prove they are every bit as competent in combat as on the parade square, if they're to pass training. They load up for their final attack and last chance to prove themselves as infantry soldiers. We need to make sure that their skills and drills are suitable for them to pass out and go to their regiment. Things like their fire manoeuvring, grenade throws, their magazine changes on the move, their stoppage drills. I'm looking at the whole action to make sure that we run as, a, as an effective fighting unit. Those I'm particularly looking at Lubin, Cheeseboro. Got it, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to judge who's going to make the, the top spot. In this last scenario, the recruits will need to attack and clear an enemy held farmhouse to pass field training. So I went contact just above two sections position. This is the, the final of a series of attacks that we've used to test the guardsmen and make sure that they have taken on everything from the last 28 weeks. The recruits surround the farmhouse and drive the enemy back. Chief, get ready to lead him in by that stream, OK? It is exciting. You think about joining the army, you don't think about doing anything in your room. You think about it, soldiering. That's what sort of gets the blood pumping. Hudson, are you useful there, you know? So f off over there. You have to work together. Even if you shy away, you get brought into the group. And obviously they'll have a go at you in the moment, but it's all well and good because it pushes you to be the best that you can be. The platoon successfully secures the farmhouse and neutralizes the enemy. Everyone all right? Everyone got all yes, the Yes, everyone all right? Everyone okay? 50, no 50, casualties. 50, tell people to get water on, yeah? 50, 50. 50, 50, 50 get water on. Register, it? Never in the history of me believe that I would be able to handle this amount of pressure. Well, I go from selling petrol to having a live grenade in the palm of my hand. Close into the farm building, boys. Move in. Get the section in, yeah, to the barn. 
the attack was gleaming as much faster as I thought it was going to be. It ran really smoothly. I was pleased with the guys. Their skills and drills were good. It feels like I've um, taught them well and that they've got to a good place. Good job. Well done. I hope that feels good. Congratulations. Well done. Good on you. The Fijian recruits in the platoon celebrate a successful final attack with the traditional victory song. At Windsor Castle, all those taking part in the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral parade prepare for a state occasion that will be remembered and watched by generations to come. The day of the funeral is a huge day. It's a culmination of seven or eight long days, especially for me because I had, I had my um, input for all aspects of, of everybody on parade. On the 17th of April, 2021, at 2.50 p.m., his Royal Highness is taken from his place of rest and the funeral procession begins. We've trained and re re rehearsed, but of course, there's a huge pressure because we had a national silence um, and it was on the hour. We had the King's Troop firing their guns at that moment. The margin for error was probably about five seconds either side. The drum major leads the corps into position. As the procession came round, they were very close to the front of the platoon with the special Land Rover hearse and all the members of the royal family were, you know, that far away. A few of the, uh, the half companies in, in the quadrangle were like Welsh guards and coaching guards and then coming down the hill you had like the Marines and the Navy and the RAF. We finished up uh, opposite the Windsor Castle Guard that had been turned out. And obviously because of spacing and how, how large we were with both the platoons, we had to sort of we had to curve round the corner slightly, because if we'd have been in a straight line, then they wouldn't have been able to have come down the hill and get, get um, past us. I could actually smell the flowers on top of it as, as I went past. The queen handpicked those herself. That's when it sort of, you know, sort of snaps you into the moment. You're like, wow, this is it. It's certainly the biggest event I've ever taken part in. I can't imagine how many people are watching, not just in the UK, but, but across the world. And you get some sort of feeling for that on the day, but you don't get the whole feeling. Giving the words of command for the funeral was kind of daunting. By the left, slow march. And then the coffin of his royal highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, is processed to its final resting point, flanked by senior officers. It's a huge honour. You know it's got to go right. I think I'll just, you know, remember that, always remember the whole thing. A bit overwhelming for me, like, it was my first public duty that I've done as well. But I've not stood there for that long before, like, all fully, like, in full kit. I'm not too sure on how I was, but it was pretty hard. Like, I was dripping buckets of sweat. Like, I could just feel, like, drip swap that's, like, just building up on the inside of my bare skin. Like, it felt like it was crushing my brain. I was just like, I'm not going down. I was like, I've got, I've got too much pride to let myself go down. After the event was huge elation because it felt like it went well. So there was no real time for reflection, probably for about three or four days after the funeral. But at that moment, you realise the scale of it um, and the importance of it. And I feel we did the Duke of Edinburgh very proud. In view of the entire world, the guards managed to execute a faultless funeral parade to honour the Duke of Edinburgh. I feel we did the Duke of Edinburgh very proud. So firstly, I want to say thank you very much um, for Saturday. The amount of positive feedback myself and the drum sergeant have received, yeah, it's, it's like quite phenomenal, yeah, of how impressed they were. Um, so again, that's down to you guys. Because um, at the end of the day, I'm just out the front swinging a stick, but you're the ones obviously looking and sounding the part. 
we did ourselves proud and I think we did the Duke proud as well. Like, it was just a really proud moment for me because it's like, you know, I've never done anything like this before. You know, I've, I've got all the kit on, like, I'm looking smart. You know, I was really happy and proud to be there. Everybody looked forward to, to seeing the Duke of Edinburgh because he was a laugh a moment character. I uh, shouldn't say that really about a member of the royal family, but he was. Everybody wanted to do the right thing for the Queen, but also they wanted to respect the memory of the, of the Duke of Edinburgh as well. In Yorkshire, the recruits have completed their basic training. All that stands between them and joining the Queen's Guard is a passing out ceremony. And in a final farewell to training, 18-year-old Jack Billings has a plan involving recruit Cheeseborough. I'm quite mischievous in the block. There's just certain things that really get on people's nerves and I don't know what it is, but I really enjoy just getting on the nerves. Love picking on cheese, bro. When he gets angry, it's so funny. I don't think why did anyone else appear is more enjoyable. You better see the window bit. <laughs> Everyone gets it back. Whatever I'm doing to him now, I'll probably go for a shower or something, come back and something would have happened to me. Happens to everyone. Even with being with these lads for 20 weeks, I know them better than people I've known for 10 years when I was at home. They're going out, though. Hopefully. I don't know why, it's just something that I enjoy doing. Right, ready? Got it? Just winding people up. You have to move out of the way a sec, mate. Miss... <laughs> Bucket of cold water on someone in the shower. Oh, hold the door, Reese. That's your job, you knob. <laughs> Or, I don't know, putting like shaving foam on people when they're sleeping, flipping beds, yeah. Just, it's just a bit of fun, really. I'm on back of beds, mate. So am I. We had nothing to do with that. Do what? There we go then. <laughs> oh, Getting your bed stolen, getting your bed flipped, getting your shit nicked. Yeah, it's all good fun, isn't it? It's all laugh. At 6.30 the following morning, there's no room for practical jokes, as the recruit's big day has finally come. They are about to pass out and join Her Majesty's foot guards. I feel all right. Nervous more for the fact that I, don't want, I, want, it to go, I want it to go well. Uh, don't, want to, don't want to mess up myself, don't want anyone else to mess up. Oh, I can't put this cap store in. Jeez, bro. <laughs> it's a very proud day for all of us. You work hard for the last 20 weeks. This is the day we've all been with. Him. We are all emotionally attached to the recruits. They're almost babies when they start here. They have, literally haven't got a clue, um, whether it's how to read a map or, I mean, for some of them, tie their own shoelaces. The soon-to-be guardsmen share in the traditional swig of port to settle pre-pass-out nerves. Nice to Don't quick. spill it on your boots or anything. Yeah. Every single person here deserves to be here and deserves to go to their battalion. Always follow your orders, always do the right thing, and remember the values and standards that we taught you here, okay? Right, here's to you. Cheers. 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 Today, the commanding officer of the Irish Guards, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Money, will be inspecting 25 platoon before they pass out. General salute! Present! Ah! I think you do develop a bond with them. Some of the lads, they're going to be stood outside Buckingham Palace in the next coming weeks, and that's all been taught from us. It is quite a good feeling to see what you start with to your end product.
Rob Cheeseborough didn't win top recruit, but did clinch the Soldier Soldier Award voted for by the rest of the recruits. You should take huge, huge pride in that. I'm, I'm so pleased with you. That's a biggie. That's a real biggie. Mickey, sir. I would have rather got top recruit, but maybe I'm just biased because I've got Soldier Soldier. I think I've done well. Proved to my dad that I can do it. There wasn't any real doubt coming from anyone back home. I, I, was, I had to prove to myself that I could do it. Trinity Gosling Billings, sir. Trinity Gosling Billings. How are you? Good, sir. Where's home for you? Where you uh, from? Leicester, sir. And have you got, um, have you got mates of battalion? Uh, a few, sir. OK. What have they told you about what to expect? Have they said anything? Not too much. They said it was a surprise, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will be. Amazing feeling. It makes you grow up quickly. But at the same time, there's always those moments where you act like a five-year-old. You always have times where it's just, it's just shit and you hate every minute of it. But then the good always outweighs the bad. That's how this place works, always. Recruit Lubin is also in the prizes, taking the award for best navigation. Is that something you, you knew you were good at? No, navigation? Sir. No? Where's home for you? San Lucia, sir. Caribbean. Yes, when, did you when were you last home? When were you last there? September 29th, sir. Far out, really. I am now about to leave my gym. $25, pretty much. Because I was not supposed to do this, and I was not supposed to do that, and I wasn't smart enough for this, and here I am today in combat. Now we can serve the queen. Now we can help Great Britain become a better place. Trenny Gosden and Hobson, sir. Trenny Gosden and Hobson. Have you enjoyed it? Is enjoy too strong a word? Yeah, You've enjoyed right. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what a great vacation you've chosen. Fantastic battalion you're going to as well. Hodson has been a bit of a roller coaster. He needs more reassurance because he's not doing well in some aspects. That everybody's different. But the only way you're going to know that is getting to know your lads. With the inspection complete, 25 Platoon march as a unit one last time and fall in ready to pass out. You've got probably that mind change of going from I'm a, a recruit to the mind changing to right and now guardsman. We don't want to make a tit of yourself going to a battalion or going to number seven company, wherever you're going. Yes, sir! The Soviet Prize. The new guardsmen collect their commemorative silverware before rejoining the ranks. It takes a lot for us to be here, and it takes even more to be in the square, passing out, and then off the battalion. Enjoy the rest of your military career. It's my absolute privilege to be up here with you on this, your special day, the day that you finally pass off as fully qualified guardsmen, the finest division of infantry in the British Army, bar none. We are, as you know, the Sovereign's personal escort. The division to which the rest of the infantry look to for inspiration, and you are now a part of us, and we are stronger for it. It's definitely a prideful day, because they say, to your battalions, quick march. So hearing that's gonna be a proper, a proper proud moment. To your battalions! Finally! Quick march! Once you heard to your battalions fall out, that's the official, the second you know you're a guardsman. So it's just hearing that was absolutely brilliant. They've just done so well to get here. I mean, they're bursting with pride, and, and rightly so, but they're exactly where they need to be. They're in very good shape to, to develop moving forward. This is our one day in training that's just, just for us. And the Vlad has the let us have it and people are embracing it. That's it. Done. Romeo done. Next time. New recruits become guardsmen in London. It can be a bit daunting for new lads to turn up to a new environment where you've got almost a hundred other new faces. And new officers are under scrutiny. Have to hurry you. Right. Shouldn't be spending more than 30 seconds. Um. And that's brand new, a year in service at eight in two weeks' time. 
On Saturday at 9.30, the brand new three-part documentary Dunkirk begins with Mission Impossible. Next tonight, we go behind the headlines to hear a shocking story in Channel 5's brand new original documentary, Caroline, The Murder That Fooled the World. Thank you. 